Welcome to the Valsam stand here at Transmere 2025. We're in Cairo. I'm about to talk to Boris about signaling, keeping us safe on the rail. Boris, thank you very much for joining me. As I've just had the most incredible experience on the monorail. It was great. <gasps> Amazing. It's so exciting. Signaling obviously plays a big part in yeah. that whole system being driverless. How have you put it all together? What are the future aspects of it? It's a driverless system. It's one of the biggest, by the way, uh, finally uh, worldwide. If two sections, so at the end will be 100 kilometers. But a lot of people behind that, which are, uh, by the way, in different uh, countries uh, worldwide, uh, because it's supported by uh, some people in Spain, some people in Bangkok, some people in Egypt. We all together have been able to uh, bring all this uh, driverless technology system what you have seen and uh, be able to uh, witness today. Amazing project and a great engineering reference for everyone. If we're talking about technology, what kind of technology? Is it, is it the same as what you would use in like a high speed or metro or is it completely different? No, it's the same as a, it's a CBTC system. Yes. Uh, so it's the same as any metro, uh, heavy uh, mass transit metro, so we're able to bring a lot of passengers. So with a very uh, uh, short headway between uh, between the train. The same technology as we can have uh, in uh, uh, also in the region in uh, Metro Istanbul or uh, other uh, people mover system also. And future proofing, because obviously you know the monorail we can do four car, we can do eight car. You can shorten the headway. I mean, I think I heard uh, figures of forty five thousand passengers per hour. Yeah. Um, and then obviously I'm aware of technology changing in terms of GSM, of the GSM network. How is that going to impact? The system is already uh, configured in a way that we can evolve uh, from, uh, which is now uh, we, we are seeing about 10,000 passengers per hour to the number you just uh, referred to, 45,000. It's already, I would say, prepared to that and we can have one set of four car train to uh, eight car trains, but that it's kind of software configuration which is already prepared and we are prepared for this and, and then to run with uh, multiple units. Regarding uh, GSM, so we have a different technology, but what you are referring to is the GSM R, which is more used in a, a mainline and a conventional, I would say, a railway system. Here we have uh, some technology around uh, wireless, Wi-Fi, okay? And uh, so GSMR, uh, we can discuss extensively later. It's what we are using right now. You know that we are moving now to a next generation of communication system with a FRMCS technology, which also uh, we develop product now to be prepared for that, but still, uh, still uh, uh, not uh, so many projects uh, using this technology. I think it's a bit of a way off, but I think we need to, with it being becoming obsolete, we need to be aware of what's coming and what changes or new software or technology. Exactly. Because it's a technology at the end of the day that will be uh, the next uh, reference and standard uh, uh, in the coming years. So for sure, uh, doesn't mean that the other war will be, become obsolete because we, we need to maintain a lot of uh, steel infrastructure with GSMR obviously, but will be the next step, the next generation of communication, uh, allowing to transfer much more data, by the way, which is one of the principles of uh, the moving to a also kind of a 5G or an LTE system. And I would assume that the ability to move more data is not just about the signaling, it's also about the data coming off the train. Exactly. Exactly. So it's, uh, it's uh, the data coming off the train, also for uh, exchanges, uh, for uh, maintenance purposes, uh, uh, and, uh, and also for, uh, for the passenger experience. It's and in a time which uh, we avoid the latency, which uh, allows to have a uh, direct, uh, I would say, uh, uh, functionalities. Uh, in real time. Uh, in real time. Alsan has been in Egypt for a really long time. You've got a number of signaling projects that have been completed. Uh, what else is currently ongoing or in the future? So I'm in charge of the region of uh, Africa, Middle East, up to uh, uh, Central Asia, meaning uh, Kazakhstan mainly and all this area. So you're, you're right that uh, in Egypt, uh, uh, we have a strong base uh, since uh, many years. Uh, it's kind of uh, what we call kind of a home country for signaling with a very skilled engineer and a uh, lot of competencies here. But it's true that we are developing in much other countries. Uh, we have been recently awarding with a, uh, a great project uh, in, uh, in Morocco. 
uh, to be prepared for the World Cup 2030. We have also uh, 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 some projects, uh, both uh, mainline, what we call mainline, conventional line, and also uh, signaling in uh, Turkey. Also in Tanzania, uh, we are uh, also participating uh, um, uh, to, uh, to um, equip uh, some signaling uh, lines. So a bit, a bit everywhere and we are uh, growing uh, step by step in, uh, in the region. And now we are developing an engineering center because our purpose is to uh, Ameca for Ameca. So not just technology or engineering coming from uh, Europe, but also developing the people here because we have a great university and we have a great capability. So uh, we are developing engineering center both in, uh, in Egypt and in Turkey, with now around uh, 200 uh, engineers that are able to uh, develop a project uh, by themselves uh, in, uh, in the region. On signaling, again, we have a lot of opportunities to come in Egypt again. We have been awarded recently from uh, one project. We are also developing uh, uh, some uh, uh, technology uh, for uh, South Africa uh, specificities in the market. In Morocco, we continue to, uh, to invest, to be there and to develop uh, with, uh, with the customer their program. Uh, and in Turkey, uh, more opportunities to come as well.